Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's Bible study. And if you've been keeping up with the series, we've been doing a, a study on people in the Bible, some famous and some not so famous. And we're going to be doing a lesson tonight about someone whose name is hardly ever mentioned. Some people don't even want to talk about it or teach about it. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the story of Jezebel. The story of Jezebel. And the scriptures that we will be using tonight will be 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 30 through 33. And we're going to be borrowing some information from 1 Kings 17, 18, and 19. Just to get a little more in-depth on this, okay? So, the God's word reads this way. 1 Kings 16, 30 to 33, if you have your Bibles open. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took the wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. And for tonight, we're going to use this subtitle, The Influence of an Evil Woman. The Influence of an Evil Woman. Now, before we get to Jezebel, got to do an introduction that leads up to her and how she rose to power. Amen? Everyone should know by now that the children of Israel were God's chosen people. They were led out of Egypt. Y'all know the story by Moses. And God always kept his servant with them to lead them and guide them. Now, after Joshua had died, God raised up some judges to lead them because of the children of Israel was going around doing their own thing and, and the things that they were doing seemed right. In their own eyes. So God had to raise up some judges. To lead them. And because they were doing their own thing. And they had forgotten all about the laws of God. But they were. Now look. They were also easily influenced. By others. And they became very disobedient to God. And look at this. They no longer wanted God around. Mm, mm, mm. In the book of Samuel. They went to Samuel, who was their last judge, and they told him, We want a king. We want a king. We want a king. Just like the other nation. Samuel, this infuriated Samuel that he took this matter to God, and he discussed it with him. And God told Samuel, Now watch God. Honor the people's request. And let them have a king. And then he also reminded Samuel. Because Samuel was kind of feeling some kind of way. So he reminded Samuel. They are not rejecting you. Samuel. They are rejecting me. The one who brought them out of Egypt. So Samuel went back. And he instructed the people of Israel. To go ahead. And choose themselves a king. And Saul became the first king of Israel. And then he was later followed by King David of Israel. Now, after these two men were no longer sitting on the throne, there were many, many kings that came after them. And the majority of these kings were very, very evil rulers, and they oppressed the children of God. One of these evil kings was a man named Omri, who purchased a hill for $4,000 in our money, which is still today called Samaria. He reigned over Israel for 31 years, and he walked in the ways of his predecessor, King Jeroboam, who built many idols and convinced the children of Israel that they no longer had to go to uh, Jerusalem to worship God, where Solomon had built God's temple. And he had the people worship idols, in, in, in Dan and in Samaria, instead of actually worshiping God. So Omri continued this tradition, and he had the people worshiping in Samaria instead of Jerusalem. 
And God was very, very angry with him because Omri was misleading God's people. Now, soon after King Omri died, his son Ahab replaced him and became the new king of Israel. Now, Israel was divided into two uh, king, kingdoms. Israel was the northern kingdom, and Judah was the southern kingdom. Now, the king in Judah, during the time Ahab became king in Israel, his name was King Asa. And he had already been on the throne for several years when Ahab uh, took the throne in Israel. I just threw that in there to kind of help somebody out. We're still going to get to Jezebel, I promise you. Ahab reigned over Israel for 22 years, and he was even more wicked than his predecessors. He assembled more than 400 false prophets because he did not want to listen to any of Jehovah's prophets. He only wanted those prophets who would tell him what he wanted to hear. Now, although there were still some in the region, prophets I'm talking about, who remained faithful to God in, in, in this region. And one of these men, name was Elijah. See, God still had some prophets there that believed in him. Ahab did not have any respect for God. And watch this. To show you what little regard he held for God, he even went and married a woman that wasn't even from Israel, wasn't even considered a child of God. And she even had even less respect for God, nor did she believe in God at all. This woman's name was Jezebel, and she was a very, very devoted idol worshiper. She was the daughter of King Ecbel of the Sidonians. Sidonians, I'll get it right here in a minute. And she was a true believer in Baal worship. Now, let me explain what kind of worship this was so anybody out there don't get confused. People who worship Baal believed that he was the god of weather and all nature. They also believed that he was the god of fertility, which meant to them that he was a god of human creation. Baal was a god that was strongly revered by the Canaanites, and Queen Jezebel was going to make sure that she did everything in her power to get everyone, including the children of Israel, to forget all about Yahweh and to start serving Baal. Worshippers of Baal went against every law that God had given the children of Israel. Jezebel influenced Ahab to tear down the altar that was set up for God. And she commanded that anything that, re that reminded the people of Yahweh was to be destroyed. This included any temples, synagogues, any places of worship. Now, if there were any temples still standing around, she desecrated them and, and dishonored them. And I'll talk about that a little later. She began a crusade. Look at this. Look how evil she is. She began a crusade to assassinate any prophets who prophesied in the name of God. Some of these men were probably hung, impaled, beheaded, or even burned. And this was done in order to put the fear in all of God's people. Her influence over King Ahab was so powerful that she convinced him. Now look at this. She convinced Ahab to build a temple to honor her God, Baal. This was done to rival God's temple. I guess the one that they had built in Jerusalem. There were all kinds of evil going on in these places uh, that were usually reserved for the worshiping. Now, the temples that were still there and hadn't been torn down yet, she desecrated them, dishonored them. Look, look at what was going on. There was prostitution. They started putting some of their false gods in these temples. And some of these people were even sacrificing their children to these false gods. That's blaspheme. Now there was a man named Obadiah. He was in charge of King Ahab's palace. But he was more devoted to Yahweh. So he took it upon himself to gather up the surviving prophets. The one uh, Queen Jezebel ain't got her hands on yet. So he took it upon himself to gather up the surviving prophets of God 
who remained faithful to Yahweh. And he hid them in two caves to keep them safe from the wrath of Queen Jezebel and King Ahab. He hid a total of 100 prophets from her and the king. And he placed 50 each in two caves. And he secretly, I don't know how he got away with it, but the Bible said he secretly fed all of these men daily and made sure that they had plenty of water. After, now look at this. After believing that she had killed all of God's prophets, Jezebel brought in her own false prophets, about a total of 400 of them in all. This was to make sure that everyone in Israel would worship her God, Baal, and follow in his worship and not Jehovah's. Woman got a lot of nerve. Anyone seen or caught praying to Jehovah would be put to death per the queen's orders. She also made sure that everyone worshipped another idol named Asherah. She was deemed a goddess. The mother of Baal and the mother of, look at this, and the mother of 70 other gods of whom Baal was the most famous. She was seen as a fertility goddess and was well respected by the Phoenicians and the Canaanites. Although Ahab was a very evil king, you could say that Queen Jezebel was more evil than him times two. She was truly, truly a servant of Satan. She not only convinced Ahab to build a temple for her god Baal, but he also built an altar as well in his honor. Then Ahab, watch this, the man had lost his mind. Then Ahab built several more gods after that. All of this was done in Samaria. This was total disrespect for God who had delivered the Israel children out of the evil hands of Pharaoh while they were enslaved in Egypt. And the anger of God grew for Ahab and his wife Jezebel, but it was much more against Ahab because he was the king who was misleading God's people. God then sent to Ahab his prophet Elijah, who told the king, as surely as the God of Israel lives, the God whom I worship and serve, there won't be any dew or rain for several years until I say the word. Now truly Elijah was a man of God because during this time, it was well known that anyone referencing or even saying Yahweh would face immediate death because Queen Jezebel saw to it that they would. And here was bold Elijah saying the God I serve, the God I worship, which meant to King Ahab, I don't respect your God Baal, neither will I worship him. I don't respect your goddess Asherah, neither will I worship her. This bold statement from Elijah was assuredly going to reach the ears of Queen Jezebel. So God told Elijah to go east and hide by the Cherith Brook near the Jordan River. For three years in this country, there was no rain or dew, just like Elijah had prophesied. There was no rain. No dew in the land of Samaria. The crops was drying up, animals was dying, and people were beginning to starve because of this great famine. Although the king had looked everywhere for Elijah, they could not find him. And Jezebel's God, watch this, and Jezebel's God, Baal, could not bring rain to Samaria. And he was supposed to be their God of nature and storm. But he couldn't do nothing about bringing rain to this area. As the famine grew worse, now watch this. As the famine grew worse during the three years, Jezebel did not cease to pray to her God Baal. And she looked, and she was convincing others to do the same thing, including her husband, King Ahab. What is our subtitle, students? The Influence of an evil woman. Her false prophets, along with King Ahab's false prophets, continued 
to try and convince everyone. You know, they praying every day, praying at night, praying every day, trying to give the people hope. So they did their best to try and convince everyone that their gods were the true gods. And despite this terrible famine, their hearts became hardened, and they still did not want to turn to Yahweh. After the three years had passed, God instructed Elijah, his prophet, to return to Samaria and speak with King Ahab. On his way there, he ran into Obadiah, who could not believe his eyes. Is it really you? Is it really you, Elijah? And he replied, yes, it is I. Now go and tell your king that I have returned. Obadiah said, now, nah, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Elijah. What if I go and tell him that you are here and you disappear again like you did the last time? You know that he will surely kill me if you are not here when he shows up. And besides that, have you heard how I hid 100 of God's prophets from that evil Queen Jezebel? Man, I've already put my life on the line by doing that. And now here you are asking me to risk my life again. Are you crazy? Elijah spoke, swore to Obadiah that he would remain right here in this location until the king shows up. So Obadiah went and did. As a liar has said, and when the king showed up, he spoke these words to Elijah. So it is you, is it? The man who brought this disaster upon Israel. Now watch Elijah. I told you Elijah's bold. Now watch Elijah. You must be talking about yourself. For you and your family have refused to obey God. That evil woman that you're married to, that Queen Jezebel, has convinced you to turn your back on God because you are now worshiping Baal instead of God. So no, no, it's not I who is to blame, but it is you and your entire family. So I tell you what, old king, I tell you what, go and summon all of the people of Israel and tell them to come to Mount Carmel. And bring your 450 prophets and Jezebel's 400 prophets who worship Baal and Asherah, whom your queen also supports. When all of the people were gathered, watch this. Elijah spoke to them and said, How long are you going to waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. Follow him. Then Elijah said, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Now bring two bulls for the sacrifice. And the prophets of Baal can choose which bull they prefer. I don't care which one they choose. They can choose which bull they want to offer up for sacrifice. After they cut the bull into pieces and lay him up on the altar... I do not want them to put any fire on the wood. Don't even set the, the sacrifice on fire. And I will do the same thing for my God. Then Elijah said, I want you, talk to the false prophets, I want you to pray to your God, Baal, and I will pray to my God, Yahweh, Jehovah, and the God who sends down the fire to light the wood will be the true God. He is the true God. The God who sends down the fire to consume the sacrifice will be the real God. And all the people agreed to this test. The false prophets of Baal prayed to their God all day, late in the afternoon, praying and praying and praying, and nothing happened. And Elijah began to mock them. And he was saying, maybe y'all need to speak a little louder. Maybe they can't hear you. Imagine him sitting there dogging these prophets up. 400 and some of them. And he began to mock them. And watch this. And they prayed even louder. And still nothing happened. Watch this. They began to cut themselves. And they, until they bled. But there was no voice from the idol. 
No answer. No movement. No nothing at all. And then Elijah, after tired of fooling with them, Elijah stood up and told all of the people, come over here. Come, come, come over here. And as the people surrounded him, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down because of Queen Jezebel and King Ahab. After he had rebuilt the altar, he instructed some of the people to fill four barrels, I guess to the brim, with water. After they filled these four barrels up with water, bring them over here and pour all that water over the dead carcass, the, the, the bull I'm using for the sacrifice. Pour the water on this bull. And then he also said, I want y'all to do this two more times. It might have been three, so I'm going to go with two more times. Fill these barrels up again and do it over and over again. He had them do this until the altar was completely saturated. The animal was saturated. The wood was soaking wet. I mean, it was mushy, mushy, mushy. Just, just soggy. Elijah then went up to the altar. And he prayed a very, very powerful prayer to his God. And suddenly fire flashed down from heaven. And it burnt up the young bull. It burnt up the wood. It burnt up the stones. It burnt up dust. And it even evaporated all of the water that was in the trench that surrounded the altar. And when the people all saw it, they bowed their faces low toward the ground. And they began shouting, Jehovah is God. Jehovah is God. Then Elijah told all of the people to seize these false prophets of Baal and Asherah and bring them to the Kishon Brook. And when you get there, kill all of them. Then he told King Ahab to go and enjoy a good meal. For I hear a mighty rainstorm is headed this way. Of course, Ahab left, rushed home. And when Ahab went and told Queen Jezebel, what Elijah had done, and that he had slaughtered all the prophets of Baal, then killed all of her prophets of Baal. She sent this message to Elijah. You killed all of my prophets, and now I swear by the gods, with an S on it, that I'm going to kill you by this time tomorrow night. So Elijah fled for his life, and he went to Beersheba, a city of Judah, which is in the southern, southern kingdom, and left his servant there. Then he went alone into the wilderness, traveling all day, and he sat down under a broom brush and prayed that he might die. And that is the conclusion to part one, the story of Jezebel, the influence of an evil woman. And if there's anyone out there that does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, Get to know Jesus Christ. He can save you. He can save you. And once Christ comes into your life and you get born again, find yourself a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church and repent of your sins and get baptized. And once you've done all of that, get in the will of God and find out what His plan is for your life because He has a plan. And until next time, my brothers and sisters out there, no matter what you're going through, no matter the situation or circumstances, you can remember this one thing. You can always, always, always trust in the Lord. God bless you out there and please, please, please stay safe.